the love and community that we build here is meant to be manifested in the full lives and lived experiences of our students. Uh, we want our students to be able to take their learning and experiences out into their communities, into their families, uh, into their friendship circles, and into the world as a whole, and be able to manifest that learning and those practices in their lived and daily lives in our communities. Umoja counseling, affirming, integrated, and intentional. Umoja counseling is intentional and deliberate. It transcends the school environment and it helps to empower students to make positive changes in their lives and the lives of their communities. We seek out the students, not waiting, immediately exploring what is going on with our students. Seeking out our students and not waiting holds our students close, keeps them in school, believing in themselves, each other, and the Emoja program. To do best by our students' accuracy and wisdom matter. Emoja counseling has no walls, no time clock. Dialogue is open and responsive, based in building relationships there is a communal dimension to Umoja counseling. Um, really, really being intentional and careful, you know, about how we approach students uh, when we're discussing what's going on in their lived lives, uh, inside and outside of school is so very important. Um, we understand probably more easily the experiences that students have while they're here in school, but as we know, um, what happens outside of school also impacts our students' lives uh, on a much larger scale. Um, the different things that are going on in our nation impact our students. Um, the need for movement, movements like Black Lives Matter, um, again, speak to the need of why it's important for us to be there for our students in more ways than just academic, making sure that we are checking in with our students' emotional uh, and, and mental well-being is so, so very important. If our students don't have what they need to take care of themselves, then we can't expect them to be successful academically. So really making sure that we're addressing the whole person um, and really connecting with the humanity of our students uh, and their needs is so very important. The porch. To say at all times what is really going on here, a learning environment should be open, respectful, playful. There should be argument, dissection, and revision. It should be personal, political, and philosophical. The porch can often be candid and sometimes even painful. Storytelling is privileged and sometimes song breaks out. <laughs> you don't say. Porch talk invites humor, noise, sometimes unruliness. A classroom with such honesty and visibility can produce frustration and also acceptance. Needless to say, trust is at the foundation of a porch talk learning environment and trust has to be earned, modeled, practiced, and openly reflected upon and revisited. Porch talk is intentional. For example, the instructor looks for an opportunity to draw out, celebrate, and dignify the quieter students. So all, all the voices in the room make up the porch. The porch is a place where our students safely communicate and advocate for themselves. Every Wednesday, uh, we facilitate our workshop Wednesday events here on campus in uh, classroom 3201. Um, from 12 to 3 every Wednesday, we get to uh, engage in our porch, uh, porch practice. We all come together and we discuss what's going on, right? Uh, we get to let our hair down and be vulnerable with each other. This week uh, for Workshop Wednesday, we were focusing on self-care and discussing the different things that we're all doing to take care of ourselves and to be mindful that we're not robots. We are human beings uh, who have uh, routines and expectations and responsibilities. But in the midst of all that, we must take care of ourselves. Otherwise, uh, those negative and um, shall we say unhealthy practices 
uh, show themselves in other areas of our lives. So just really making sure that we're checking in with ourselves and really understanding how we're doing and processing our feelings and emotions and happenings and all of the different things that are going on is so very important because when we don't have a safe space and outlet for that, again, um, those things can manifest themselves in unhealthy ways in other areas of our lives. So uh, please feel free to come join us for our workshop Wednesdays um, from 12 to three, anytime you are all welcome to come and join us and exercise and experience the porch with us. Live learning. Live learning is risky. It is freewheeling and open. The instructor yields control of meaning and understanding in the classroom while keeping an eye on learning as it is emerging. Live learning implies that the learning experience is generative and performative. In a live learning situation, the exact content and learning experience are not known before the class session begins. Surprise and original language bursts out all over, all over the classroom. The instructor facilitates and calls the learning that is happening. Live learning intentionally captures and documents learning in real time. It is a way of having a discussion that really flies while focusing the insight, capturing it on boards and in notebooks so the discussion does not disappear after the students leave the class session. It is democratic and analytically rigorous at the same time. Live learning demonstrates to, to the students through their own words that language is powerful. Ideas and texts are rich and can be made their own. Most importantly, live learning demonstrates to the students that they are smart and deep. Um, there are specific classes that are Umoja designated. Um, and the, our instructors who teach those classes partake in uh, Umoja training so that they're able to implement the Umoja practices in the classroom so that students get to experience these practices in real time. Um, if by any chance uh, you're able to advertise to your students uh, the Umoja classes, I will uh, be sharing some of that information with you all before uh, the next spring term begins so that you all know what those Umoja designated classes are and so that you can share them with your students if, uh, so that they're aware and they can enroll for the classes if they're interested in being a part. Language as power. When we recognize and validate the language that our students bring to the classroom, uh, that which they create amongst themselves, our students open up to the power of language. We can help them to develop a sense of pride, ownership, and responsibility in their own speaking and writing. By doing so, we can bring our students inside the conscious experience of wielding language, all types of language, academic, standard, Black English, theoretical. Our classrooms can be a multilingual experience which provides an impetus for our students to represent themselves while crossing bridges into other unfamiliar language they are bound to encounter in their lives. When our students experience language as power, curiosity, playfulness, and agency replace what might have been standoffishness and uncertainty. Oftentimes, um, African and African-American students feel necessary feel uh, it necessary to, um, to code switch, to code switch, right? Uh, a lot of it is survival because uh, we as African and African-American students are expected to um, express our learning in ways that are Eurocentric and that pander to a Eurocentric approach to learning. And it's really important that uh, our students understand that their language is valid and powerful and understandable. Um, and it's really important for us to empower uh, our students to use that language and not cover it up or feel ashamed of their language and the way that they express themselves. It's important for us to elevate our students' language and encourage them to use their language more and to not, um, to not uh, stifle that language, but to uh, grow that language and feel a sense of empowerment in that language because their voices are so very important. Um, and even if they are feeling a sense of, of shyness or discomfort about their language, that's when we really need to empower them more and let them know that their language is valid and that it is important and to continue using their voices. 
Tapping African American intellectual, spiritual, and artistic voices. Informed by their distinct history, African Americans have created a unique African diaspora experience, experience expressed through a myriad of intellectuals, artists, and spiritual leaders. Umoja sees individuals like Phyllis Wheatley, David Walker, Frederick Doug Douglass, Ida B. Wells. Barnett, Robert Johnson, W.E.B. Du Bois, James Baldwin, Maya Angelou, Alan Locke, uh, Thelonious Monk, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Romare Bearden, Aaron Douglas, Langston Hughes, uh, uh, Raul Nefer Amen, uh, Cheek Anita Dia, Bell Hooks, and many, many others as ancestral bridges, a way of reaching back while moving forward. The Emoja community encourages our practitioners to continually mine the work of African Americans in the interpretation and construction of knowledge in our classrooms. We invite our students and ourselves to claim this richness that resides so often below the surface. Um, students and faculty who are a part of the Emoja Scholars Program will be uh, exposed to just an array of amazing Black voices, artists, and practitioners, because it's important that we gird the loins of our students with this knowledge and with the voices of these amazing people so that they know that, they, that these amazing Black people not only exist, but have made significant contributions to our history. Um, it's important for our students to be able to embed uh, the knowledge of these amazing uh, pioneers in their language, uh, in their own uh, personal lives. And it's important for them to be inspired by these individuals and be exposed to them so that they too can implement the work and knowledge of these people into their own learning and into their lives. Um, so we just have a wonderful time uh, learning from these amazing pioneers and these amazing people and building uh, the library of our students is so very important. So we get a chance to really touch on a lot of these, a lot of the work of these amazing people during our workshop Wednesdays uh, and our reading session. So I welcome you all to join us as well for these wonderful uh, experiences. Awareness of connectedness to African diaspora. Umoja students are interconnected to African peoples around the globe. Umoja practitioners can facilitate an awareness of how students' actions impact all African people. This sort of practice intentionally traces the historical, political, and cultural lines emerging from Africa. This practice encourages a global African consciousness in an effort to foster collective responsibility, empathy, and self-awareness. This practice also actively asks that students join their voices and stories with the voices and stories of peoples across the diaspora. In this way, Umoja students will become aware of the diaspora and articulate, articulate their place in that experience. Um, we have such, such a diverse group of students who come from all over the world. And, you know, African and African American people are not monolithic. Um, we all come from so many different places and so many different cultures and languages and histories and having a space to bring all of that together and learn from each other is just such a beautiful experience. And we learn so much from each other and we grow closer um, as the result of that learning and that sharing with each other. The more we know, the better we can relate to each other and the world around us. Community building, communal intelligence. Community is absolutely fundamental to an Umoja learning experience for the students, the faculty, and the staff. Umoja practitioners intentionally call out and support students' talents in an effort to build community and self-esteem by tapping the intellectual and social capital represented by our students, we build community and greatly enhance the meaning of our classrooms, offices, beyond helping keep our students in school. Building community, community causes students uh, to be accountable to each other's learning. Communal intelligence implies that we teach a willingness to see your own suffering and that of your sisters and brothers and taking responsibility for it. Community transcends our courses and services and reaches into the I am because you are. Again, building that community is so, so very important. I am you, you are me. And being able to see each other as a community together rather than a separate community is paramount in this program. Um, 
again, being able to elevate the experiences of students so that they can take ownership of this program and leadership is so important. And we can only do that by, by building community together and bringing all of that rich culture together. Acceleration English, math, ESL, and counseling. The vast majority of our students begin community college in basic skills courses. And like many students, they often do not make it to transfer level English and math. Students are warehoused. So often our students are taught from a deficit perspective. Umoja flips this and engages students from a capacity perspective. One way acceleration has been talked about as is a shorter pathway through sequences, moving students more quickly through basic skills to transfer level courses. Of course, shortening sequences when it makes sense matters. Many Umoja instructors are working with new accelerated curriculum expressions. The Umoja community recognizes that faculty must design and own the curriculum which they offer students and that local authorship and expression is fundamental to the success of accelerated curriculum redesign. Umoja encourages deep acceleration where faculty go beyond structural changes into questions of pedagogy, practice, student capacity, and current theories around adult learning. Furthermore, Umoja asserts that counselors are integral to the success of any innovative curriculum and pathway being offered to students. So again, being really intentional about structuring uh, the learning experience, dialogue, and teaching around the culture and diaspora of African and African American students is uh, so very important in this area. Um, asking students to adjust to a curriculum that, that does not speak to who they are as individuals and does not speak to their culture and their needs is the reason that we end up losing uh, uh, many students oftentimes and the attrition rate drops. So again, really being mindful about how we are approaching uh, our education and our learning process for African and African American students and making sure that it speaks to who they are uh, instead of speaking to who we may want them to be outside of themselves uh, is so very important, right? Uh, we're looking to help our students find that actualization within themselves. And we can only do that if we do it in a way that meets their needs. Occupy study spaces on campus, studying in the village. A dedicated, welcoming Umoja space where students study and spend time together builds community and nurtures academic success. Designed by students and staff, the Umoja Village is a sacred space that offers opportunities to increase exposure to historical and cultural experiences from the African diaspora. The Umoja Village is an expression of and celebration of our students' voices and model for how students can approach their homework. Encouraging, even requiring studying on campus works well with our students because it models, practices, and affirms sustained and effective study habits for our students. We must positively and actively foster studying, deep concentration, and creativity for our students to be successful in their academic pursuits. Um, we have students here right now who are studying and enjoying the space here uh, in our uh, Umoja village here. Again, 3111 here on the third floor. Um, nine to three uh, are the hours. Students are welcome to be here even after, uh, even after three o'clock. I leave the doors open for students to come uh, and partake and enjoy the space for studying, for building community, uh, if they just want to lay down and take a nap, there's a couch here, you know, um, making sure that they have a space that is theirs is so very important. And my heart is always so happy to see our students here uh, studying and building community together. Um, so welcome to our Umoja village here. Um, you all are welcome to stop by and join us anytime. Mentoring a wise and trusted counselor or teacher. A major reason students drop out of college is due to, feeling, to feelings of isolation or alienation. Mentoring is a practice that allows students to make a more personal connection with someone who can offer support, guidance, and encouragement while dealing with the challenges of managing school and life. Many Umoja programs offer mentoring for students in a variety of formats that may include faculty and staff mentoring, uh, mentoring from the community, and peer mentoring. 
um, Professor Charles Jeffries, Professor Desiree Simons, uh, Dr. Kimberly McRae, uh, myself, we all serve as faculty and mentors. Uh, we also have Dr. Kayleen Oka. We have Dr. Uh, Dowdy Abe. We have um, uh, Dr. Carl Livingston. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Helena Ribeiro, um, among several others who are all faculty, Umoja designated faculty uh, and mentors for our students. Um, if you have any students who are in need of that support or that mentoring, please send them our way. Uh, again, we want to keep students in school. We want to keep students supported. We want students to know that they are not alone out here uh, in, this, in this journey and that they've got support right here. Uh, mattering. Mattering is intersectional. Cultural, social, political, civic, spiritual. Given the years of institutionalized educational inertia, which often includes potent doses of failure and dissatisfaction, dis, uh, disaffection, we are being asked to create learning experiences that reclaim mattering and give agency to our students as, as matters. It matters what we teach, we must take a risk to include content that fuses suffering identity and freedom. Mattering increases context while making choices about what is urgent. As matters, students' experiences and perspectives become a critical resource to the knowledge and analyses emergent in the class and in the program. I too am a student. Uh, so I, you know, have that unique positioning of being able to support students, not just as a faculty member, but as a student as well, being able to share in those learning experiences with students, uh, being able to share the challenges that I have, uh, while, you know, allowing them space to share their challenges as well, makes for a really wonderful experience because oftentimes students uh, see a separation between faculty's experience and their experience. So it really kind of fuses those experiences together so that students understand, okay, he's a student too, he gets it. He understands you know, uh, about deadlines and about coursework and about the different pressures and, and challenges that come along with being a working student. you know. Um, and so being able to bring that mattering element to students from that perspective is so important. So humanizing that experience for students is so important because again, it helps them realize that what they are doing matters, who they are matters, what, they, what their goals are matters, uh, and that what they're trying to achieve in their own personal development matters. And having that safe space and having a community to be able to share in that is so, so very important. And I'm just happy and honored to be able to be a part of that work with our students. Umoja as a power base. Umoja community programs use their infrastructure, their resources, and their community as a model for Black achievement across the campus, state, and nation. The dearth of ideas regarding Black student success calls us out to participate actively and openly in the analysis and decision-making about how to reverse the tide. We share awareness with our students of their shoulders uh, being leaned upon by their brothers and sisters, their mothers and fathers, and many others. Our students as leaders are trained and empowered to engage faculty, administrators, and staff alongside and on behalf of their peers to voice their desire to achieve their educational dreams and goals. Our students as leaders are empowered to partner with faculty in the spirit of dual commitment. I commit to you, I, you commit to me. When we embrace our position, Umoja becomes more than a program. It is a privilege that, we, that will be leveraged, a power base from which action and commitment to success for historically under-resourced students and others. Um, our Umoja uh, Advisory Council, our Black Solidarity Think Tank, um, all of these efforts are, 
a part of the, of, of the power base of this program, being able to bridge that gap between administrators and faculty and students so that we all understand we're in this together. There is no separation between us. All of our voices are necessary in order to change the policies and the practices that have previously harmed African and African-American students and turn that narrative around and engage and uh, implement policies and practices that speak directly to the needs of our African and African-American students. Um, being able to uh, articulate those needs to upper levels, you know, where the decision-making happens is so very important. Otherwise, we continue to perpetuate those same practices and policies that have caused harm and, and we end up losing students. So making sure that we are all at the table together and building that power base is really important. So very important. Encircling diversity. Encircling diversity affirms my I am as we stand in a place where we feel embraced and connected to everyone and empowered to rebuke all forms of cultural domination of any kind. Encircling diversity brings about a fully present student and challenges the community to make justice and freedom a primary question. In MLK's words, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When we encircle diversity, we are more than merely tolerant. We seek deep understanding and celebration of the way someone different than ourselves speaks, thinks, imagines, and becomes. When we encircle diversity, we acknowledge and appreciate our oneness and diversity becomes a resource and a strength to our Emoja community. Gifting. Sharing what we learn honors and extends learning. Umoja students become teachers and pass wisdom as they gift their learning to their family, their community, their peers in the program and at Umoja events. Preparing the gift of learning by collectively identifying what is most meaningful, what is necessary and why this learning gift matters is an act of grace that helps us become accountable to each other's collective intelligence for purposes that uplift the community. Umoja practitioners believe that knowledge and practice are communal and meant to be freely gifted. When we give a, lear a learning gift, we become conscious and thoughtful about belonging to each other's achievement. Our students become 1,000 wide and 10,000 deep. Everybody's business. We are a village acting in accord and unafraid to be seen and heard as we do our work, leveraging every voice and source of information to do our best by our students. We gather and share information about our students. As Umoja professionals, we feel that including everybody in our distinct disciplines and work duties shares knowledge and builds commitment. In Umoja, a counselor is an English teacher, a math teacher is in the history class, an administrative assistant is a tutor and everybody is a coordinator. We know what each other is up to in an intimate, detailed way so that we can support and reinforce each other. We cover and pitch in one e pitch in one each other's work, even while we maintain in maintain our areas of expertise. When a program event or program need comes up, we all inquire and support. A particular and particularly when it comes to our students, we all stay aware of their progress, their challenges and crises, and their successes. That interconnectedness is so very important. Again, our goal is to keep students in school and to help them be successful on their path, which is why it's so important um, that each one teach one approach is so paramount to our work here in the Umoja Scholars Program. Um, I have a, an open door policy uh, for all students and faculty. Uh, I want everybody to know that I'm here. And if there's anything I can do, I'm here. Um, knowing that there's someone who has your back knowing that there's someone who cares about you, who cares about your success and your humanity is so very important. And that's uh, pretty much the foundation of our work here in the Umoja Scholars Program. Um, we've you know, built some wonderful partnerships already uh, throughout the campus with other programs and bringing everybody together for this work. And I'm just looking forward to continuing that work and, and building more stronger partnerships. 
um, as the program grows. I know that was a lot of information, uh, but I thank you all so much for hanging on with me and, uh, and reviewing the program goals and uh, the program tenets with me. Um, I think that just about wraps up my presentation. I want to go back to that share and make sure that I didn't uh, leave anything out. Okay, yeah. So that, that's the end of my presentation there. Um, so I'll go ahead and open the floor up for any questions that anybody has. Hey, James, this is Dr. Pat. I was just wondering how um, we could like get training to be a Mojo faculty or send our faculty to you to get training. Fantastic question. Um, we actually have our Umoja representatives who are coming from California next week so that I they can, you know, they can tell me how all of this works. Um, this will be my first time meeting uh, with our Umoja reps. And so we'll be discussing faculty uh, training um, and I'll have some more information for you all next week once uh, I get to meet with our, uh, with our reps and our advisors and I get a little bit more concrete understanding about what the training looks like and how all of that goes. I'm, I'm not clear if they come here to do the training with us or if they train me to train others, uh, but I'll learn about all of that next week and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all. Great, thank you. And who knew you could sing like that? My God, oh. thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I tried to keep that tucked away, but um, giving this particular month, I just felt it was appropriate to, to share my gift a little bit. So thank you so much, Dr. Pat, I appreciate you. There's a lot going on in the chat um, and I will read a little bit of it. Uh, Nathan and David commented on um, the Wednesday sessions. Nathan said it's a lot of fun and usually there's food. Um, David suggested maybe he could bring tea. Um, oh, you know what? I'm gonna pause reading the chat for um, Dr. Fisher. Go ahead. But not Dr. Fisher, but good to James, brother. I, I echo Dr. Pat. Now you know you you brought it through with the song, so thank you for opening the space. Great uh, program, of course. But I guess my first question is, what would you see as as an institution? How can we support the program? Really, what is one barrier that you know that we could do right now as an institution that you could say we could really support? What would you say? I need money, and I know. <laughs> I know that is a recurring, that is a recurring name across all of them, but I need money. I'm trying to get our students out into the community and, and doing things. And my unfortunately, my budget is so tight and I'm thinking, how the hell do they want me to do, you know, things with students with this minimal, this minimal budget? Like I need some money so I can, you know, you know, get some things done for students. But that that's the main one for me right now because our students are fired up and they're ready to get out. And so I'm, I'm currently figuring out um, activities and events that you know, don't cost any money or don't cost very much at all, but that's challenging, particularly for the kinds of uh, things I want to expose students to. Um, so if anybody knows anything about you know, any grants available or any funds available anywhere, please let me know. Thank you so Thank much. You, uh, we'll, we'll follow up with this. We'll I appreciate up. you so much. Patty. Hi, that James, that was, yes, your singing was phenomenal. I loved it, love music. And the presentation was so informative. So I'm the service learning coordinator. And although students have to be in a class that's offering service learning in order to sign up with me for service learning, um, I make myself available to all students as a resource um, for information uh, and help if they want to get involved in service in the community just on their own or connected with 
something they're doing. You know, it doesn't have to be offered in a class. Uh, they just won't be officially doing service learning. So the long and the short is please refer students to me if they want. I know this has nothing to do with the money request you just made, but um, but if you want to your students to become engaged and, and I know for certain learning styles that community engagement that in, um, experiential learning is really really helps them um i would be glad to work with people just have them get in touch with me thank you so very much patty i appreciate that you know i'm i'm trying to connect our students with all the opportunities <laughs> all the opportunities so i will certainly be sending students your way thank you so much for your support DeAndre, another thing I wanted to touch back on your question. If any of you have any resources, any information, any skills that you would like to bring to our workshop Wednesday, please let me know. I would love to get you on our schedule. Um, I, again, I'm trying to bring all the resources and information to our students as is possible. So if you have, if you have the gift, if you have the gift, you know, come on and join that practice and come, come share that gift and that knowledge with us, please. Greg. Uh, hey, James, how you doing? Thanks for all the info. Uh, I put this question in the chat. Uh, should we be telling all our students about the program? I've been posting a page about it in all my Canvas shells. Uh, using the program website, but it would be great if there was an official template we could use. I want to make sure I'm putting out the information right. Sure, absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and share the Umoja uh, website, our website with you all here in the chat so that if you all you know want to advertise the program with your students or share it with your students, you can you know share the share this link directly with them so that they can go to our page to learn more about the program uh, and learn about how to apply to, to join us. Thank you so much, Greg. Is there a no, is there a cap on the number of students you guys can take on? No, no. Come one, come all. Great. Yeah. Uh, uh, ooh, do, 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 crowdfunding, yeah, look, crowdfunding, I'll take all the money. I don't care where it comes from. I just need... <laughs> please, yes, uh, any, any support that you all can provide, please, yeah. I, I love that spirit, James, and also, let's just go ahead and get the state to pay for the colleges the way they're supposed to. <laughs> Is Bradley still here? What's really going on? Right, what's really going on? <laughs> so, um, Suleiman, am I saying your name properly? Suleiman, I see your oh, hand up. Uh, yeah, you, you could just say Solomon. That, that works. Solomon. Um, yeah, no, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I'm glad that this was a, a space that is being created at Central. So I kind of have like a question and a half. Um, my, my main one is, uh, I work at South Seattle. I'm an advisor there. I just got hired like two, three months ago. Um, but I am curious in like, you know, supporting more efforts to support black students, specifically African students. Um, my dad's actually currently going to South or not South, sorry. He's going to Central right now to try to get his AA. So, you know, it's like a big thing for me, not only like culturally, but also like for my family. Um, so I'm curious, like how you see Umoja's expanding like across the three campuses, if that's something that maybe money-wise it's not able to be done right now and like how people from different campuses can get involved. Um, also, I do have experience doing grant research. I don't think I'm good at it because I just graduated from grad school like last year, but I have a master's in nonprofit leadership and I tried to focus on grant stuff even though I don't really enjoy it. So I'm down, I have a lot of networks in grant writing and grant like research so I could tap into them, see what type of grants they're looking into and maybe help with that grant research part. Um, and so, I feel like we're connected on the emails because we're all in the Seattle colleges. I was going to email you real quickly about that. But yeah, my main question was about, um, yeah, the cross call, like cross, cross campus collaborations, if that's a, a thing that can be done or is in the future. I would absolutely love to see that happen. Uh, I, uh, th this is the first program that is, you know, with all the Seattle colleges. And so we're starting here. 
I'm assuming that as the program grows here, it's going to get more attention and pick up more speed and will spread across the other three. I would love to see this program at all of our campuses. And I would love for all of our programs to be able to come together and build community in that way. So I will follow up with Dr. McRae um, because she's the one who, who you know, brought me on to, to get this program off the ground and up and going here. So again, I'm assuming that the, the end goal here is for this program to be represented at all of our campuses because there's one at Highline, there's one at Bellevue. Um, so it only just makes sense to me, you know, that it would be at all three of our campuses here and not just at Central. Um, yeah. So as I gain more knowledge about that, so per, next week we'll be discussing that too when our reps come from Cali, because I'm like, look, it's great that we have it here, but you know, what about North Seattle? What about South Seattle? You know, I'm sure that this can be a really wonderful and beneficial program uh, at all three of our campuses. So more to come on that. Thank you so much. And please, I don't, look, I don't give a damn how good of a grant writer you think you are, how not good of a grant writer you think you are. I'm taking all the gifts, all the skills, all the support. So please, please, Mr. Core, um, any support that you can provide, I would be, will be so very grateful to you and would sure. love to partner with you on getting an Emoja Scholars program up and going at South. Totally, totally. Um, I'm going to head off because I have to get into another meeting. But yeah, thank you a lot for this, um, you know, kind of sharing what this program is. Anything um, I can do for your father here at Central, please send me an email. Oh, connect yeah, me. for sure. I yeah. immediately sent him the program um, because he has a very peculiar situation with like how he's trying to go through college. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, you should connect with the Emoja Scholars, see what you can do to kind of get your voice heard about your situation. So hopefully he takes me up on that and we'll be going to y'all's office absolutely fantastic and congratulations to you on that degree sir it ain't sure. out here in these streets for sure <laughs> <laughs> no thank you for, for that for sure thank you so much yep, thanks peace Solomon out. um thank you so much James and I I feel like we have a lot more to talk about related to Emoja this feels like just the beginning um so I will I put my email in the chat and if anyone has follow-up questions for me or if anyone wants to host another COSI related, I think that we should try to continue this discussion. I'm so thankful for our folks from North and South who joined and for everyone who joined, but um, it seems like there's so much interest in making this uh, a bigger effort. James Robinson, thank you for all that you're doing. It's so much. I'm I'm thankful to hear about it. And um, anytime you want to come back and sing or talk about emoja or tennis, whatever, you're welcome. Thank you all so very much uh, for taking time to learn about our program today. And thank you so much, Katie, for your support. I appreciate you. Take care, everyone. Have Blessings a good day. to you all. <laughs>